Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the earth texture from Vallejo and seeing what it's like to base with. Here we go, here's our Vallejo earth texture acrylic, and I've gone for the brown earth colour, and I'm going to use this to base all my space marines that come with the Imperium magazine. So in this video, we'll do a bit of a deep dive into this earth texture and we'll go through exactly what it's all about and different ways to use it. And so what I thought would be cool is to take three bases and some other materials and then I'll show you how you can kind of mix it with those materials to get some different effects. And those are going to include some really fine sand, different flockings and even some little gravel rocks too. So here's the pot of earth texture and I bought mine on Amazon for £9.50 but you can get this with Wayland Games for £7.94 and Element Games is £8.99 so if you can get enough things ordered together to get free delivery I think that's a great price there at Wayland Games. So you can see on the back it tells us we can mix this with all different things and you just clean your tools afterwards with water so I think this is going to be quite versatile comparing it with like the games workshop version like these different technical paints they do this is such good value for money you're getting eight times as much in this pot and so you're going to get a lot more with Vallejo and the cheapest I've seen these technical paints is like four pound and a penny so for twice the price you're going to get eight times as much product with Vallejo Right, let's get this open and have a look. And this is the first time I've opened this, so I've got no clue what to expect. And um, we've just got this little protective film, which peels off. So let's get that off. And it's looking great so far. It does look like this is rammed full, but I suspect there's an air bubble in there, which we'll see in a second. So looking good so far. Let's get a little stick and mix it around and have a look. And the texture of this is almost like um, a frosting, a very like thin frosting you'd have on like a cake. So if you or imagine you're doing like you cream in the butter and sugar together for like some pastry or a cake, then this is the kind of effect you're going to get. Or a little bit like a, a pudding, like a chocolate pudding, maybe in texture. So it feels great to mix up and then just to like rub some on my finger there. It's a little bit gritty, but it's very fine. So again, it feels like a, a kind of frosting almost when you rub it between your fingers. So there's some definitely some sand texture in this. Now let's start with our first base. I'm just going to use this little Citadel tool to pop some on. And the first base, I'm just going to go straight up with the actual earth from the pot. And then I'm going to spread it around. I'll do some different thicknesses as well. But putting it on is really great. I think straight away this is a lot easier to use than the technical paints I've used so far from Games Workshop. I mean, I've only been doing these models for just over a year now painting any Games Workshop models and so I've only really used a limited amount of products so it's great to try new things and now I'm starting to explore new products, new companies and it's really fun but I can certainly say right away that this is really easy to spread around and I think this is going to be great to put on the models because a lot of the time the models are going to be stuck to the base so you're going to be working around their feet and I think this has got you know a lot of potential that it's going to be really easy to do that but let's put a little bit more on here and so I'll do some different thicknesses and levels. It says it's going to dry in like 45 minutes if you do it thin, but sometimes it could even take days to completely dry. And I'm going to leave all of these overnight so we can have a look. But I'll scrape a bit off the front there so we can have it nice and thin in the front. And then we'll go into about three different levels of it. And when we do some other bases later on, I'll go really thick and then we'll see what that comes out like. But I'm um, really impressed with this. I, I love sp like spreading it around. It's great fun to use. And um, I think this is going to be perfect for what I've got in mind for my Space Marines and for my Necrons. Now let's move on to the second base. And here I've got some budgie sand, some pet shop sand, lots of different flockings in different grades. And so I'm going to mix all this together. And so we've got like lots of little rocks now and little bits of gravel that we can put on our base. So this is going to make it hopefully a bit rougher, a bit more like a rocky outcrop. And so not so much like a desert or smooth texture. I want some lumps in there. I want this to look like rocky and like lots of gravel. So I'm just going to put a load of paste on the base. I'm, I'm not going to waste any here. So I'm just going to mix this together on the base. I guess if I'm doing a lot of these, I'm going to do the mix in a little tub or something. But here I'm just going to sprinkle this little mixture of sand and flocking into that paste and then mix it all together while it's on the little base here. So 
you know, this isn't obviously ideal, but it's going to work and we're not going to waste any. So that's great. And I'll just do this in real time so you can see it all coming together. But there's a lot of colour in this. So it's really hiding the greens and even the dark green flocking that's coming through. So that's really good as well. And right away, it feels good. This is a lot more like drier now. This lumpier. We're getting a lot more texture, which is going to be really nice when we dry brush this up on our models. And again, still easy to spread around and smooth. There's not too big a lumps in here. So we can work this around the feet and the legs and different parts of the models when we're doing it for real. So yeah, really liking how this has gone together and we'll see later how strong it is when it dries. So I'm guessing there's some kind of like glue or PVA in this mixture that's gonna go rock hard when it does set. So we'll wait and see. But you can see that's nice and thick there. I've gone for different levels again and we'll leave it overnight to set, but that's really holding itself up really nicely. Now let's go up a level and I've got some little bits of gravel here. I've got a skull and I thought let's try a bit of cork as well. I use that quite a lot in my bases. It looks great for rocks. And so I'm going to break some little bits of cork off. Maybe just go with three little bits. And so we'll see how the paint covers it and also how that glue in it will stick it to the base as well. So I've just picked off a few little pieces there. And then I'm just going to take a nice big blob of this earth. Really great to smooth around. It's awesome. And then I'm going to mix in that bits of cork, there's three bits of cork, and right away that is covering it up nicely, it's soaking it up, and then we're gonna just hopefully have this to stick it down. So I'm gonna put that onto one side of the base, and then I'll work a little bit more of this paste around it, and just make it look as if I would doing a real base for a model. Now I'm gonna use these bases for objective markers so we don't waste them. And as I'm using this for my Space Marines and Necrons, I think it'll be perfect for some Warhammer 40,000 objective markers, maybe some weapons on there or some little cargo crates. We'll wait and see. But here we go. So this is working really nicely, really spreading in. It's soaked into all the nooks and crannies of that cork. And it looks to be holding it in place now. When it's dried, obviously, we'll know exactly how strong it is and if it works. And you'll see that later on. So now I've got these little bits of gravel and these are quite large actually. This is probably the size I would use, the bigger size of these on any model. And normally I would glue it down with some super glue or I've been using some Gorilla wood glue a lot because that dries quite quickly. Um, but usually with rocks like this, I would use super glue and then it's on nice and strong. And then I'll put the different basic materials around that. But this has coated those little bits of gravel really well. And uh, again, hopefully it's gonna hold it down and be nice and strong. Now I'm just going to pop a skull in. Again, I'd normally glue this too, but I'm just going to see if the glue in the mix is enough to hold it. So there we are. I haven't gone crazy with the amount around these rocks, so we'll see if it holds it and how strong it is. But there you can see they're really quite big. So yeah, be good to see. Now here's the three all ready to go, and I'm going to leave these overnight to dry. So we've got the three different ones. We've just got the basic there for like a deserty. We've got a bit more of a rocky outcrop, so some gravel and things like that. And then we've got the really big stones to use for big rocks and that skull fixed in as well. So let's leave this dry and we'll come back to it overnight and check out the result. And here we go, it's been 12 hours now since I did these. They still look a little bit shiny, but they're completely dry. So let's have a look at them individually, starting with the smoothest one. And so I'm really happy with this. There's a lot of texture coming through on this. So it's really great. Even on that area that's really thin at the front, there's a lot of texture. That little bit there's a little bit wobbly, but the rest is rock hard. Yeah, just that little bit sticking up. But this is solid and um, really, really firm. So whatever glue is in there has set this nicely. But you can see a lot of texture coming through. This is really great. I'm really impressed with this and certainly going to use this for my armies. Now I've got the second one and this we went really high. I went with five mil to get that big chunk. And this is just mixed with the sand and the little bits of locking. So that's come out really good. That's solid. We're not messing around here. That's really strong. And yeah, again, just rub my finger over it. None of that paint's coming away. A little bit came off there. Did you see that little speck? But otherwise, that is rock solid. So really strong again. And I like the texture that's coming through from this. This has worked out really well. And it's cheap. Once you're adding these budgy sand and flocks to it, that hasn't cost hardly anything at all. Now we've got the third one. And here's where the real test is to see how strong this glue is in here to hold down the cork and especially those rocks and gravel. And they're on. They're not coming off at all. I'm being quite rough here. And yeah, there's a little bit of a wiggle on that bit on the top. So just be careful with these top bits. But look, when I flick it, that is solid. That isn't moving whatsoever. The stones, I'm pushing them. 
they're well on and they're not going to be handled any rougher than this there's a little bit of movement on the skull there so whether that's completely dried or whether it's not quite strong enough i'm not sure so you might want to glue the skulls down i thought we could just do a little bit of dry brushing now and i've picked out two colors that might work i've got the beige from vallejo and the bane blade brown from games workshop and so these are a little bit lighter than the actual brown earth but let's see what happens when we dry brush it up so i've got my very vegan makeup brush super soft bristles we'll go with that brown first and we'll see exactly what happens here i'll put some on the bristles work it in on some cardboard get that nice coat of paint all over those bristles and then i'll use the card and the kitchen towel just to work off most of that paint so we can do some dry brushing and let's take that first base and just gently go over all the most raised areas and straight away it's not really standing out that much as a highlight it would kind of get away with it but if we compare it to the original it's just lightened it up really it hasn't really brought out a lot of the texture i would say and i can't really see much of a contrast going on there so let's try another one and this is the vallejo now so we've got that beige this, this is a lot darker and as i'm putting that on i'm not seeing anything whatsoever so i would say that this beige is pretty much the same color as the vallejo earth or very close to it for sure next i tried some rakath flesh base this is a little bit brighter now and I, I wanted something just a little bit bolder not too much i don't want to take away from the model but i did want to bring out a bit more of the texture and i think this one's working a lot better it's quite subtle but it's given us a nice effect so i've gone all over that rougher piece and there you can see that's more like it that's what i was looking for we can see a contrast between the earth and the highlight now Let's put a little bit on that smooth area as well. And I've got to say, I'm much happier with that. I think this is a good recipe and one that will really match the blues from my Space Marines. So here we are, we've got the two here on the left and they've been highlighted now. And the one on the right hasn't. And you can see it's changed it quite a bit. That's gonna be a lot better. We've got some nice texture coming through from that highlight. And I think that's gonna work really well. So for me, Rakarth Flesh is the highlight color I'm gonna go with for my armies. So what's it like to base with? I've got to say, this is excellent. I love it. For the price, I can't, it can't go wrong. I think you get so much in here. Um, the dry brushing, I would say these colours didn't do an awful lot, but they will be good for just doing a little dry brush on the base around the feet of the model to give an idea of dust coming through. But the main highlight I'm going to use is the Rakarth Flesh Base. So those combined, I think we've got a great recipe here. But what do you think from what you've seen in the video or maybe you've been using this already i'd love to hear your thoughts so let me know in the comment section below i'll put some links to amazon element games and wayland games in the description below there'll be affiliate links but won't cost you anything extra in fact you can save at wayland and element and i'll also get a small commission so you're supporting the channel too so thanks so much for that i really appreciate it i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you found it helpful and i also hope it's given you a good idea of what this is all about i'm really impressed with it and glad i picked some up to give a go but thanks so much for watching please like if you like it subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on tabletop skirmish games if you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel then please check out my patreon page and thanks to everyone who's joined so far it's really awesome we hang out on discord talk about the hobby share ideas and help each other out and you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else so i'll put a link in the description and it'll be great to see you there <laughs>